All right, everyone, welcome back to the 2020 Vision Podcast. I'm so excited for episode nine. As you all know, we're getting back into it. We have to took a little break, you know, for midterms and homecoming, enjoy that experience. And as I did that, met a lot of new people, networked, you know, connected as we should as college students in our 20s. So today with me, I have most amazing, beautiful, and I have Griffin Howard. I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great. So why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself, and then we'll get right into the conversation. Okay. Hey, y'all. I'm Anaya Griffin, like I said. Uh, I'm a first-year strategic communication major from South Jersey. Very excited to be here. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for hopping on. And so, as you all know, Season 3 is called Rebirth. We've been talking about you know, the changes we're going to apply to our lives. Uh, season 1, you know, we talked about what changes we need to be made. Season 2, we talked about how we're going to make those changes. And then Season 3 is, are we going to apply them to our life now or later? So, to start off, we know this is your first year at Hampton. So, you know, for all the first years, you know, filling those jitters who are trying to, you know, get comfortable in where they fit, you know, trying to find out what they want to do and get excited about the future of their college years. How has your experience been so far? To be honest, I feel like it's been very easy to get acclimated, easier than I thought it would be. I've heard a lot of stories about people who aren't doing well in their classes, can't make friends, aren't meeting people, and I've had the opposite experience. And the best part about it is throughout that whole time, I didn't really have to deviate from who I am to like, meet people, to make friends, to join orgs. You know, it's just been very chill. I'm liking it so far. That's good. And you know, one of the things you talk about is always being yourself, right? And for most of you that you know are in college or in your 20s, you have to use that as your foundation. Be yourself. Don't feel like you know you're pressured to join so much stuff. You know you don't have to be out there. Now I speak personally all the time as a personal testimony. Like I was constantly out there trying to be you know the center of attention, always trying to be in people's faces, and that sometimes can cost you you know good opportunities because you're. You're doing, you know, things that you don't want to do. You're, you know, being extra sometimes, which you can call it, you know, exaggerating. Um, oftentimes, it's also, you know, portraying a fake character who you are, right? Because God put us on this earth, you know, to portray one image, and that's art, right? And so when you go around jumping to, you know, other people and saying, like, I want to be like this person, I want to be like this person, I want to follow after these people, like, it's not a healthy mindset you have. And so on this podcast, we've been talking about, you know, mindset. What is the mindset, you know, being a college student? What is the mindset of being in your 20s? Um, something that we've talked about is being genuine and you know, authentic with yourself. And I know that's something that, as a first year, can be difficult due to, you know, everything that you're experiencing around. You know, you, you're exposed to stuff. You see new stuff for the first time. There's no rules, no regulations. You know, you're away from parents. And that's something that people really take to that level. You know, they're like, oh, I'm free for the first time. I have this full-blown freedom. So... For you in that regard, you know, how did you feel being free, you know, from kind of like having words to follow or, you know, being under like a household? How did you feel like being a full young adult for the first time when you got here? Um, we were free, but we weren't too free. As you all know, we had curfew for a while up until very recently. So we had to be in by 11 o'clock, 1 o'clock on the weekends. A lot of people were annoyed by that, but I personally, I enjoyed it. I liked being in without feeling like I'm missing out on anything because everybody else is in. And I like to go to sleep early. I want to catch up on my sleep. But um, I wouldn't even say I was free when I came to college. My parents are very relaxed, very chill. We trust each other a lot, so I was able to go out when I was home. And I had home training. I wasn't out here acting crazy when I got here. Um, but like you mentioned earlier, there's a lot of new things that I haven't seen before, a lot of organizations to join. And as a first year, you see this club and this club and this club, like, oh, I want to do that. I want to do this. And you just got to know, like, you won't have time to do that. Or, you know, that's not your thing. I considered running for class parliamentarian. And then I looked at the workload and I was like, I can't do that. I don't have time to do everything. I don't have time to reach my hands in every single club or activity going on on campus. And it's just about knowing who you are, how much time you have, just be realistic about everything. Yeah, and you know, you talk about like having a schedule, you know, setting a schedule for yourself. I think one of the things that you know, I talk about with being an RA, just seeing like the freshman class and how they operate, is most people don't have a schedule for themselves. And I think that can be difficult in terms of your life because you're coming from a lifestyle that had a schedule, you know, being under your parents, being under your family. 
and you get to college and you're just like, oh, I have all the free time in the world. Like, I'm about to go crazy. And I know for most of you who are in your first year or just got to college, like, y'all have been out. And I have seen it. Everybody has seen it. We see y'all being out, but it's a time to lock in and focus on what you have to do. And then college, especially nowadays, you know, I talk about this with my dad. Because he talks about being in college, you know, back in the 90s versus today, is that they didn't have that many distractions. You know, we have so many distractions. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, y'all, as a personal testimony, when I first got to college, I won't worry about class. And I'm gonna just put that out there. Mama, if you're watching this, I'm sorry, but I was not worried about class because it's just, I had so much freedom. Like, and I, my parents weren't strict. They, you know, let me leisure as I, as I wanted to. And I drove in high school, you know, I had friends, so we were out. But college is a different level because you're around adult space, you know, and you're free. Like, that's a different level, you know, freedom. So it really speaks to the volume of like, can you manage your time? Can you prepare, you know, for your classes? Make sure you don't slip up and get caught, you know, behind so you have to catch up. Like, that's what I had to do. A lot of catching up uh, and caught so far. And then, like you said, like joining organizations and, you know, doing things that you want to be a part of, you know, sometimes you can't be a part of everything. And you have to just really go down to what you're passionate about and how you are going to, you know, put value into the things that you're passionate about. So speaking of that, you know, you're almost done with your first semester at Hampton. I'm sure you've been a part of a lot of different experiences, had a lot of different networking opportunities and also had some fun. So what it, what it has been some of the you know biggest passions that you've been a part of, you know, whether it be on campus, whether it be through people or through organizations, what is the passion that you've discovered? Well, I just joined HBCU Canvas. That's a new organization on campus focused on creativity. Um, at Hampton University, we just shot a thriller video for Halloween. It was really cool, it was really fun. Um, I just like self-expression, whether it's through fashion, through art. I'm an artist myself. Um, that's probably been my favorite initiative here at Hampton, and I'm looking forward to all of the activities they have coming up. Okay, yeah, so for most of you, that then uh, HBC campus is, you know, up and popping on, on campus, and I think it's beautiful when they have spaces for people to really express themselves. And I love what you said about that, because I feel like a lot of people are afraid and ashamed to express themselves because we live in such a society where people feel like they're gimmicks, you know, and people feel like, oh, I have to be this certain way, I have to be that certain way. And I talked about this on the previous episode is saying that we're all, you know, we weren't made to be the same, right? Like, we're two different people, the people watching are different people, like, we're, you know, we can be each other's audiences, but we're not made to be clones, you know what I'm saying? I think a lot of people in their mind are like, let me see what this person is doing, let me go follow what this person is doing, and that's really, like, unhealthy for the medical, because then, you're not living your true life you know you feel like it's like being a fabricated version of what people want you to be and i really emphasize all of you is saying when you're thinking about your life what you want to set up for in your 20s because that's like literally the most important decade i want you to think about like what's the foundation that you have set up that's number one absolutely find a foundation for your life and then build on that foundation from different angles so your academics your opportunities your networking you know the way that you approach life as a whole like those are different angles that you should be uh, coming off of so love what you said about that and then talking a little bit you know about uh passion also okay so you told me that you're into art you know you love art most of my people who love art you know art is a way to express yourself it's very peaceful um you know you physically mentally spiritually art can speak so many volumes so tell me what art specifically does for you how do you feel like you know, it, is it a coping mechanism? Is it some way you can express yourself? And then also tell me what type of art, you know, you're into and like, how do you, how do you feel like art just speaks to you at all? Um, I've been into art ever since I was little. You know, I was always drawing, always painting. It was just something I've always done. And then I was like, I actually want to pursue this. I want to get better at this. And that's what I did. In high school, I took AP art. And it's just something I've always had a passion for. I don't get to do it as often as I want to. I have to start carving out that time and talk about time management. I have to take the time to pursue my passions. Um, I create mostly self-portraits because I look at myself the most. I know myself the most. And I think putting that on canvas is really easy and it just helps ease my mind. I like looking at the finished product as well. It just makes me really happy. That's what I like to do. Okay. Yeah, that's awesome. And I, I think for most people, you know, self-portraits is that that could be considered like a mindset component. Like you really need to look, you know, people really need to look themselves um, in the mirror and say, like, what makes me who I am? How can I portray this 
self uh, portrait of myself every single day and how do I perceive myself to the world and how does the world perceive me and I think that's the two biggest parts uh, of mindset I want people to emphasize is that when you wake up in the morning you have your routine um, you know whether it be wake up brush your teeth you know put clothes on and get ready for the day and then you have the other side that you have to do mentally is say your affirmation you know figure out what can really make your day great that day or say some type of positive statement and i really emphasize to all of you is that start your day like you want to start you know your year i talked about this i think it was either the previous episode or the episode before that we celebrate new year's every year right and every new year this is the crazy craziest bogus things people celebrate new year every year people say i'm gonna be a new version of myself well I don't understand how that can be when they're still not satisfied with the old version of themselves, right? And the biggest thing I say is there is no new version of yourself. There's a better version of yourself. You can't, saying that you are going to be a new version of yourself is basically saying you're going to get rid of your old self and just be born again as a new person. That's physically impossible, obviously. But having that mindset to say like, I'm going to work on these specific things, make myself a better person. Wait, you know, wake up, work out, you know, do the things I need to do, take care of my skin. Like that's, you know, all of that is important. It ties into who you are. And that's what I had to realize for me going into my senior year. It's like, I was tired of the way I was living. Like I wanted a, a better life. I wanted a, a better way to be as a person. I wanted a better mindset, like to better myself. And I poured into the different angles like I spoke about to make sure that the best version of me it doesn't exist because I'm constantly working on myself. You can never like have a full version of yourself that's the best because every day something will happen, right? Like this life is going to make you do something you know, that you're going to regret. It's going to make you do stuff that you don't want to do. Like that's just the, the beauty of life. So, um, and then going into the last part is talking about the future. So, you know, college is a space for you to prepare yourself for the future. You spend four years on a campus, whether it be an HBC, PWI, figure out what you want to do, network, connect, and try things, expose yourself, join programs. What's the steps for you for your college career? What do you feel like you want to accomplish? What do you feel like you want to be a part of? Is there an imprint that you want to leave on? Talk to us about that. At this point in time, I know for sure that I want to establish lifelong relationships. I want to make connections. I want to get a good job and make a lot of money. And that's really all I have right now as a freshman. It's okay to not have it all figured out. Absolutely. Of course, there's people who are seniors don't have it all figured out. And as a first year, Please. it's all right. As a first year, it's definitely okay to just not know where you're going. Just try your best, do what you can, and just see where life takes you. Yeah, and I absolutely agree. I think, you know, I tell people don't vision, you know, your life like 50 years from now, vision your life 10, 10 to 15 years. That's a good max space for you to say like, I'm going to take you know this route, figure out what path I'm going to go on. When they say like the term life is too short, obviously that's a true statement. But if you look at that 10 year space, that's a lot of life. 10 years is a long time. Like a lot can happen in 10 years, y'all. You can get a new job, you can get married, you can have kids, you can do all this and that. And it's up to you to decide how you want your life. So for like me personally, 10 years from now, I don't plan on, you know, settling down. I still plan on being on the, you know, the top of my game, owning, you know, my business, figuring out what I want to do uh, career-wise still, trying to figure out like, I'm not going to be satisfied. But once I get to that point where I'm satisfied, that's when I want to settle down and figure out like, okay, now I can, I can rest. Cause I want to work first, you know, work my first 10 years. 15 years actually, so I'm 21 now. By the time I get to 35, I want to be fully satisfied with my life. You know, financially stable, able to travel. I'm gonna travel the world, you know what I'm saying? Then I can, you know, think about settling down and everything. So I'll just say for all of you, when you're thinking about the future, don't settle, you know, for less. And also don't settle at all sometimes because it can scare you, you know what I'm saying? The future is very scary. If you look at our society today, you know, we're dealing still with COVID, you know what I'm saying? People thought COVID was a hoax. It is not, let me tell y'all right now, it ain't no hoax. <laughs> COVID is not a hoax. It is real. Still dealing with politics, still dealing you know, with presidency, with political issues. Got these wars, you know, in these different countries. Like, it's, it's literally a full circle moment. So I think it's important, you know, to say for people, when you think about the future, like, 
just think about set set a goal for yourself and think about each year how you're gonna achieve that goal. And you know, don't settle. Just if it works out, it works out. If it doesn't, it doesn't. I think you you know you said it beautifully. You said like you're never gonna know fully like what you really want to do. And I still don't know as a senior. I'm still figuring stuff out. You know, so I could be the most established senior in the world, and I still would you know be lost. Like this days where I wake up and I'm like, what am I doing with this? You know? And that's okay. Yeah. So I, I definitely um, agree with you on that. And then to wrap it up, you know, let's just, uh, you know, talk about like affirmations for a second. Cause I know, I don't know, I don't know if you believe in affirmations, but there's a lot of people who truly like believe like if they say it, you know, it's going to happen. So for me, I wake up and say affirmations daily, you know, like I believe in myself. I really, you know, know that I can do this. I set my heart out and I achieve my goals. Um, so. To end it off, like, what are some affirmations that you say to yourself? Uh, what are some affirmations that you would, you know, suggest people to tell themselves daily and then to really, like, work on their self portrait I would say I don't, I'm not as dedicated as you. I don't wake up in the morning and say it to myself, but I do have them on my phone. They come up on my phone throughout the day and I read them and I think subconsciously, like, just goes to your head and you think about it and you really believe what it's saying. Um, I say I'm confident, I'm smart, I know what I'm doing, even though I know what I'm doing. But um, I can do it. Things like that, just positive affirmations to boost your confidence. I think they're important. Absolutely. I, you know, it's it's the most harmless thing you can do is tell yourself that you believe in yourself, you're confident, you love yourself, because if you don't then the world is not gonna tell you I, I tell you that and that the world has shown me plenty of times throughout my my college career and also just being in my twenties that, you know, you gotta be your own support system. You know what I'm saying? And then set up foundations for yourself to succeed through other connections. But don't rely on people for happiness. I don't I, I just think that's such a false um you know, way and accusation of life that I need to rely on this person for happiness or I need to rely on, you know, this materialistic thing for happiness. But it's it's an bring you know, direct holes. And that's that's not healthy at all. So Thank you so much uh, for hopping on this episode. Thank you all for listening and tuning. We've been on this journey since the summer. We got so much more to go. Um, you know, this is a chance for people to express themselves, be fully, you know, true to themselves, and show their potential what they can do. So I appreciate you hopping on. Um, if you have, of course, if you have anything else you want to say to the audience, um, made it through the first semester. Good luck. The next one. Look forward to seeing what you do with five guys. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you guys, and we'll see you on the next episode.